Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our final round of Swiss for our Malaysia Regionals here at Diamond Mall, Subang Jaya. I am your commentator, Phoebe, and I'm joined with... It's my Myron. And we are... Deep work. And we are back oh. with uh, our final round and with two very notable players who has been playing for um, quite a bit, uh, especially we have Brian Wong here. I would say recent, actually. Recent for JSD, but... Uh, Brian has started playing since last year also, VGC 17, so oh, they're VGC both quite yeah. fairly new, but they're both very strong contenders, yes. I can give you that right now. Uh, Brian Wong has actually uh, had met multiple achievements in previous uh, previous season, but with VGC 18 specifically, he has yet to make a big splash, and we see him... Um, the highest achievement accolade he has on his belt is currently a top 16, the recent Singapore Open 2. Back yes. in January, yes. I attended that and I did face him in that Singapore Open. Yeah. Um, we'll have to see whether does he ride with the same Mega because back then he ran with the Lady Gross matchup. Wow, okay. Um, of course, now we see him sitting at 3 2, uh, still in contention for, uh, you know, for some CPs. For some CP, I'm not sure yeah, about top cut. Top cut yeah. It depends on his resistance from his previous matches, I would say. Um, him, he is going up against GS Duo at the moment, um, who is sitting at 4 1 at the moment. So it's a more of like a down pair, I yes. see, for JS Duo. But definitely a newer player compared to Brian there. And, uh, you know, he definitely has been shining throughout the season, I would think. Yes. Yep. Throughout the season so far, when JS Duo started playing back in March, if I recall correctly, in an MSS, um, that was his first VGC event, and he has not um, entered a tournament, go home without CPs ever since then. Yes. He, I mean, this is really his season, I think. Um, I, has he been playing the previous years? No, he previously he's been playing singles throughout. Yes. Only so he's single. a very notable singles player as far as we yep. know. But you know, this, this is transition his first back into VGC and yeah. he's he's thriving. That, yes. That's all I can say. And we can see in team preview, we see that JSD is rocking that Metagross, Landris, Gastrodon, Amungus, Rodam Heat, and Tapulele. And Brian's side of the field, we have a very interesting Smurgo, which is the first thing I see. And uh, of course, the Charizard team with Landris, Tapu Koko, Snorlax, and Hitmon top. Yep, and then on team preview, both um, actually I prefer I prefer the Charizard matchup, but let's not ridicule that JS Duo does have answers in that uh, JS Duo does have answers to also um, Brian Wong's team at the moment. That Rotom Heat is definitely going to come in clutch, but um, for example, Brian does have answer with the Landris. Also, the Smeargle and Snorlax could also pose a big threat on JS Duo's side on the field. Like I said, both have answers to each other, just how you maneuver it, that's, that's the tricky part. Yes, um, I mean, from what I know, Metagross and Lele here is a very powerful combination, and you know, if you don't have any checks for it, it can basically run through your whole team. So, you know, with Brian here, the Charizard is definitely going to come in useful against like, Metagross and Lingus. Both yeah. Landris are also have to come, gonna have to come to the field. Yeah. Both have very important roles, um, Especially like the Landris on JS Duo needs to check Tapu Koko and um, so uh, Landris also to an extent. But yep. Brian does cover up that matchup with Hitmon Top as well. Yes. So I'm saying Hitmon Top um, kind of deals with the Landris um, and Rodom Key to an extent if it does carry Stone Age. Yes. But the Hitmon Top is also checked by Metagross and Tapu You see my point? There are answers to each other. Yes. So it's a very 50 50 game here. It's very 50 50 and position heavy. The point is, it's going to be very position heavy. In this matchup, um, I don't, I doubt that uh, JSD might bring the Metagross because if he does, it's definitely going to be there to check um, Landris for sure and him on top potentially. Yeah. If if he does carry um, a lot, of, if he does carry Zen Headbutt and a lot of uh, attack investments, potentially able to knock out the Charizard, that could also be a viable play. I'm also really interested to see if Brian will actually opt to bring that Smurgle there, you know, because it does, could offer a lot of disruption. Yes, a lot matchup. of disruption. And of course, having that pickup pressure in both the hit on top and the smoker gives it options, even further support options there. Yep, both are rather hyper offensive. Uh, just on team preview, we're looking at it, but I, I just kind of prefer the Charizard matchup here because I thought um, if JS2 had like Tarenta to back it up and whatnot, it would be, but it would be fine. Um, JS2 does have answers, but the problem is the hit on top. Yep. The hit on top could potentially provide a fake on support, white guard white support, guard potentially yep. stone age. Then there are many outs. Um, in the team, but like it's just a matter of positioning right now. So I'm very excited to see how this, both these players are uh, opt to play the hyper offensive matchup. Yeah, Brian also has the double intimidate support there as well. Yeah, but there are many ways for him to deal. It's just to neuter the landers and the metagross. So we have to see how this adapt from this. It's a definitely for me. Um, just on paper, it's a hard matchup on this yeah. part. We 
we do see on Brian's side of the field leading with that Charizard and Landorus really setting up the Intimidate. Actually trading Intimidates with JS also leading with his Landorus and that Lily there. Yep, we do see that the Landorus um, does opt to go for the Intimidate, uh, does proc the Intimidate first on Brian's side of the field. Yep. Plus potentially indicating it could be a Choice Card variant. Potentially, we're not sure. Because yep. we do see that the Lily does activate the Psychic Terrain last. So we do know that in terms of speed here that uh, the Landorus on Brian's side is faster. Yep. Uh, just on at least, first impressions. At least on first impressions, yes. But at, I mean, right off the bat, I see that Charizard are immediately threatened by that opposing lander is there. No, but with the Intimidate, it yes, can, the it, Charizard it can, can definitely, definitely survive. survive. Yes, but you will be taking pretty heavy damage yeah. at the same time. Brian is known to be a very hyper offensive player. We'll have to see if he opts to go for the potential Rock Slide Heatwave play, or he might just go for a Rock Slide Chip at the first turn. We do see the Protect coming off from the Charizard, not wanting to take off any potential Rock-type moves from that Landorus. Oh, and we do see it was a Choice Scarf variant on yes. just your side. And we do see a Psychic Psych Z potentially yep. going on to Landorus. I, I feel it's going to Landorus. Because the Landorus is such a big, big threat. Yeah. But we do see the Psychic Z, the Shattered Psyche there, coming out from just the other side of the field. So the targeting Charizard Landorus. I feel Landorus, yeah. Landorus, yeah. Because it is the bigger threat. I mean, it helps check the Landorus potentially at the back if he decides to bring Rotom Heat as well. So, um, in terms of um, the board state right now, JS, um, Brian has decided to trade um, the Landorus for knocking off the item on the Landorus on the JS. Landorus, yeah. Yeah. But Brian actually going for Tapu Koko. In, in replacement of that now fallen lander is setting up the electric surge. Now this is a very um, good position in my opinion on Brian's side of the field because he could easily go for a dazzling gleam and heat wave because we know that the Tapu Lele moved last, right? Yep. The Charizard could easily go for Mega Evolution, Heat Wave, and Dazzling Gleam. Cover all your options. That's my that's my opinion. You might bring in the Rotom Heat now. Yeah, which is a very good typing to resist all of these hits at the moment. Yes, especially since the Landorus on Brian's side of the field is, you know, is no longer active. So we do see Brian actually Mega Evolving his Charizard right now. Will we see the Heat Wave? I still feel Heat Wave. Yep, Come on, heat, heat, heat Wave and Dazzling Gleam. It's so safe. Yep. We might just see Lily go for Protect here. Yep, you gotta play it safe. It yes. comes down to this Rotom Heat, live the Heat, Leave the hits, leave the, hit. leave the hits <laughs> from Dazzling Gleam and Charizard twice. Yes. Oh, with that damage, again, let's see how much does the heat wave do here. Because this is that's a very important nice. calculation. Oh, Ooh. it's a three hit. Okay, now that, that's a very that good position a for Jazz Duo, I would say. Yes. Because now that we know that the Rotom Heat will guarantee live the end of this turn, unless you may opt to go for a potential Thunderbolt and Overheat play. I don't know, but that's very potential. I will have to see because Lily cannot opt to pick up any KOs at the moment. Like you lost your psychic brain, you can't, you, and your psychic you're not even life orb by the way. Yes, and at the same time, you know that Rotom that I would think is definitely staying another turn on this on the field. Yeah, and we do yeah. see a protect on Rotom Heat. What does Lily go for? Yeah, potentially psychic, and we do see Electrum Z. Is it going on Rotom Heat? Because the Rotom Heat is such a big threat, in my opinion. Yeah. I think it might actually attack down, attack the Tapu Lele, but let's see here. Alright, and then, um, yeah, we might see go into the... Oh, it does go into the Rotom Heat, definitely eliminating a threat. We might just see Overheat also going onto the Rotom Heat. Just to pick... What does Charizard go for here? A Heat Wave, okay, a just trying to play it safe. It's definitely going to get chip damage onto Tapu Lele, which is a good call, because Tapu Lele can't do much on the field. It's a two shot. The burn, it's insignificant in yeah, my opinion. Insignificant, but it does I mean the long run it does chip a little bit? But in terms of you know, yeah. But this is the thing I was mentioning, right? Like the sidekick is not going to pick up any kills on the field at the moment. Um, and we do know open that and that the top lily moved last. So Coco and Charizard are free to dish off the damage that he wants. It could easily go. It could easily go for a thunderbolt now with a heat wave or thunderbolt with. Oh, I don't know what Charizard said he's running. He's only yeah. reviewed Heat Wave so far. Heat yeah. Wave Protect, Heat Wave, Heat Wave, Heat Wave. Yep. But yep. Tapu Kobo definitely has to go with the Tapu Kobo. He can dish as much damage as he can so he can pick that it up with the Heat damage. Wave. It's a very It's a Rotom very Rotom. Rotom. Okay. Oh, that's a big problem so already. So will we see the Thunderbolt come out into the Charizard slot here? Yeah, I, I feel he's going to go into Charizard. Because Charizard yes. cannot freely yes. dish off all these Heat Waves. Yes. It just can't. 
My my guess would definitely be the Thunderbolt into onto the Charizard slot. But you're not getting the boosted from the terrain when Charizard does live, which will indicate it's gonna be a very bulky Charizard. Yeah, because unless um the Charizard uh, has invested so much in bulk, not much in damage, and then the or the Rotom Heat is just not invested much in damage output, more in sustainability, more HP, more bulk in general. And now that the Metagross is out, right, the Coco has already burnt its Electrium Z. Yes. So we, the Thunderbolt, by right, should not be able to pick up on the Metagross. And Metag Mega Metagross is faster than Mega Charizard Y. But it is a little bit tricky for Brian here, actually, because... How so? Because he, because at the, at this point of time, yes, he has like the speed, the speed advantage. Definitely, you you get massive damage right off the bat. But he's already so heavily damaged. You're right. You're right. You're right. And we know that he's already lost his um, Landris. Yes, he's already lost the Landris, Which is which is his an, which is his own, his answer other than that Charizard for that Metagross there. And we just see Sky Drop. Oh, but it's too heavy to be lifted. I'm I'm very confused by the sky why? drop. Why? Yeah, by the, the sky drop play. Why the metagross can't be lifted by the sky drop? Yeah, it's too heavy. Yes. And we do see an overheat going on to the top of Goku. Okay, I, I'm a little bit confused. I am very confused. Yes. Actually. Um. Why Why the sky drop onto the metagross? Was he making a prediction? He, maybe he, he, No, I I just don't think Brian um remembered the the, the weight the weights yeah, the of weights. the Pokemon. <laughs> Okay, that, that was a little bit odd, but now we see a Snorlax facing down that Rotom and Metagross with another Mon at the back. Phoebe, Phoebe, yep. the Charizard has not revealed anything else besides Protect and, and Heat protect. Wave. Yep. If there are other two moves, potentially over, uh, Overheat, he has yes, Overheat, overheat. Right? Um, If he has Tailwind, like there was a turn where you know that the Rotom Heat Thunderbolt did not pick up the KO on Charizard. If you would have gone for a Tailwind that turn, potentially set up for, set up for whatever's left in the back to pick up the KOs, and with along with Charizard, by the way. Yeah. So for that, like, imagine if there was a Tailwind scenario, the Charizard is able to pick up the KO yeah. on Meta Metagross. Right. I think that Rotom Key there really actually proved effective for JSDO. I mean, managed to, to survive so I mean, it's bulk, I mean, the bulk against that Charizard and Tapu Koko lead, and of course, being able to dish out so much damage on that Charizard, which effectively is one of the checks to that Mega Metagross there. And I guess picking off the Landorus from Brian's out of the field early on definitely was effective. And also another note of good information to know is that the Metagross on Jay's new side does carry Zen Headbutt. Yes. Which, uh, because in most archetypes after the Oceania IC, most Metagross do not tend to carry Zen Headbutt. They tend to carry the Ice Expunge. Coverage, Ice yes. Punch, yep. to cover up uh, better matchups. But having that Zen Headbutt is just a, such, uh, a much more of a threat to Brian's out of the field because the Zen Headbutt could do so much damage on the Charizard. And we know that JS, JSDO from the game just now, he decided to bait out most of the Z moves, get rid of the, the Landris, which he knows is a threat. Yep. Because the Landris is able to pick up the KO on Rotom Key. Yep, Rotom Key definitely do massive like, damage. JSDO knew which were the key mods on Brian's side and picked those off first. Yep. So Brian really needs to conserve um, these Pokemon well. I don't know if Snow is a good call for the matchup per se. Because um, it's, right. it gets hit so much by Metagross, Landris, and Tapu Lele. And yes. you can't do much back because you need to set up first. I think Brian should have preserved his Landris much better because I think that Landris was definitely key for him in that game. It could have checked quite a number of the things on JSD or side of the field, but letting it go down so early on the first couple of turns, I think that really, really cost him. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep, yep. We're looking through the chat right now and we see that. Uh, Matthew saying that JSD is a super solid player. Yeah, the the foresight in his game plan here is super solid. But we're not doubting that at all. Yes. And we do see both leading off with their choice scarf Landrises, fast cats on the field, and Tapu Lele also on the field. And actually he, bringing Snorlax this time, leading with Snorlax actually this time, Brian. He might just go for a belly drop thing all line. Right, right off the bat, a belly drop, potential belly drop. Yep. But with Land, uh, Tapu Lele on the field, right? If Brian does have Tapu Koko in the back. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Um, he could switch in Tapu Koko on the field, but into a Landris, potentially getting Earthquake, I'm not sure. But he could change the terrain, potentially trying to buy time to survive with his Landris. Potentially. This is all potential, please, because I don't see what can Snorlax offer on the field right now. If the Landris does carry knockoff, choice car, you can easily knock off the item on Snorlax. Yes. And if it is carrying knockoff, I think knocking off the item would be a good option. And getting yeah. rid of the berry straight off, I think. But in terms of board position right now, JSD is really solid in my opinion because both Pokemon pose a threat on the field. 
and we do see Snorlax does reveal the prote um, protect. What does yeah? Yep, and Landorus on Brian's side decides to go for a knockoff onto the Landorus on Jezio's side, and we do see a U-turn onto Snorlax, which which buys him a turn. I would say, which buys Brian a turn right now. I would suspect that GSDU here definitely uh, wants to get rid of Here, Landris again. Yes, Landris again. He knows Landris with the same threat. game plan, yeah. He knew that getting up Landris in the first game helped him so, so effectively. And he's just gonna do it again. I mean, if it worked, you know, why fix it? Yeah, well, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Because, well, but my, my uh, argument is that why not go for a U turn? If you have U turn on the Landris on Brian's side, why not opt to go for a U turn on Lele? You know. You've known from game one that the Lele is forced to attack. Like he needs to get rid of the Landorus on Brian's side. Yes. Right? Why not U turn pivot play from there? Yes, giving you momentum with the U turn definitely uh, I think JSU went for the right call, just not into the right one. But I'm I'm a little confused. Like Brian led with Snorlax here. And in the last game we did discuss how Snorlax did not really I mean we were confused as in we didn't think Snorlax would be a good uh, mod to bring into this matchup, I'd say, as if it doesn't offer much. So, what do you think Brian was thinking? Like, leading in Snorlax? Because he has nothing in the back that can switch into a Tapu Lele Saikim Z, right? Maybe he's just got a sack or something, right? But I don't see, like, because if you were to bring your Snorlax in front, you need a partner to help assist support your it, Snorlax yes. to support it. Maybe, like, a fake out and get your belly drum off or something, uh, something to support it, but. Leading with Landorus though, next to that Snorlax is what really was peculiar for me. Exactly. Now that the Landorus um, Choice Cup has been knocked off, it could easily switch moves from U-turn into an Earthquake right now. Or go for a Rock Slide. And we do see an ally switch on... What? Okay. We might just see a Thunderbolt going on to... Oh, oh, do, is this the play, boys? Is this the play? Is the we see it go, go into the Tapu Lele slot? I think we might just see it. Will we see the plays? Oh, and the ally switch definitely. JSU is just wow. He he's just he is just thinking two to three steps ahead in this game. My goodness, and then the rock side was very safe to cover the potential. Yes, wow. J I I'm lost of words. JS I'm at loss of words. What JSU a play. JSU just knew at that point of time. You know what? And he I have the Charizard, yes. by the way. Oh not my only goodness. did not only did he avoid the Gigavolt Havoc and wasted it, but he picked up he the picked Charizard. He picked up my Charizard in the yes. same turn. What a My goodness, what a play. I'm really surprised. And, and we might just knew, see a lad he, 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 he knew the Gigavolt Havoc was coming that turn. Yeah, he, and, and also precisely because he already knocked off the choice cap, so he was very free to switch moves as well. From Newton into Rockstar. And we do see an earthquake going on to the Snorlax. Should do about 40% of say. 30%. 30%. Not even. Not even. It's like 20. It's like, yeah, and we do see a belly drum being dished up. Oh, but here's the thing, right? Tapu Koko is faster than Landris. So now, when Tapu Koko sky drops, Landris is just gonna go for an earthquake. A neutral earthquake. Yes, a neutral earthquake that will. And Brian cannot switch out. If he does have hit on top or Landris in the back, then it's you're done. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the last two months, regardless. GSD is gonna nap the Tapu Koko right now and he'll deal with the Snorlax later. Like, And bear in mind, GSD just has two months at the back. Yeah, that, that's like a whole squad. Yes, they, they are coming up in heavy. I mean, Brian here. I mean, it's been a bit difficult for him. I think. I think the Snorlax lead was a little bit confusing for me. Maybe he was thinking that okay, I needed something to tank and soak up that Psychem Z Lele. But, you but know, no, that's no, what there's makes nothing me. on his side of the field. Smurgle, Landris, Charizard, Coco, him on top, Snorlax. Nothing can absorb the Psychem Z. Yes. And then now with the co the combination, the synergy of the Earthquake along with the Rotom Heat, Rotom not getting any damage. He's getting a Coco and he's dishing up damage onto Snorlax. My god! The only thing I can probably think of, wow, and okay, and the will is just to add a bit of salt. Okay, um, I think, I think, I think it's we're just, done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with with the Snorlax situation, I think he just wanted more offensive pressure with him on top and Smurgle being support, more like a, a support kind of mod. Maybe he didn't want to bring in something. And the Rotomi is a good call against Charizard matchup because if you look at the overall um, team of GSD, it's quite weak. Charizard, honestly, yeah, yeah Metagross. Um, among us, uh, I mean, every Charizard hits everything for uh, neutral ish. Yes. 
But that rodent heat. The rodent, rodent heat, heat tanks it like a man. As I said in game one, I think that rodent heat was really, uh, you know, not only being able to tank up the heat to stick it all up, but also a good counter to that Charizard there. Hard counter. Yeah. You saw the heat wave did like 20% or something. Then we do see an Iron Head going on to Snorlax. Yeah, that is about 40%. We do see a Thunderbolt not boosted by the terrain, by the way, thanks yeah. to the Levity. And just pick up the KO, a clean 2 sweep by Jezio. I am a fan of that play previously with that ally switch. Yes. That ally switch, rock slide, switching in Snorlax into Charizard. Oh I mean, my goodness. He just goodness. knew that the Gigavolt Havoc was coming that turn and he made the plays. I mean, and he was smart to not reveal it in game 1, by the way. Yes, the ally switch, she preserved that information for game 2. But Jezio Steel being such a new player and yet already demonstrating next level plays like this. My goodness, yeah. And with this... Um, if I'm not mistaken, he has locked up. He's top, yeah, he'll, he'll move on to top 8 with oh, 5 he's locked one, up his world's invite. lock up his world's invite, yes. Oh my goodness, what what a time to be GSD, right? Yeah. Like, Getting that 5 1 there would actually guarantee him in the top card and also give him his enough championship points to lock up his world's invite. And also to do it with that clip, the ally switch into a Gigabot Havoc into Landris. I'm, he can, he is done for like the season, man. Like. Oh my goodness, and that, that way to lock up your invite. Yet another competition in which he managed to attain CP in. Exactly, this, he's also obtaining CP from this tournament. He is not gone home from a tournament without any CPs. Exactly, I mean it's, it's just incredible, you know, for such a new player to, to be able to perform so well, you know. I think that's really impressive, yeah. No, I mean like, I'm, I'm not, uh, like, I can respect ally switch. Because like, I face many ally switches, um, prior before this, right? But I like it when it's used right. You know, like, you're, yeah. you're psyching the opponent. And he only revealed it in game 2, right? He didn't, like, spam it yes. round, so it game, was, round 1, use it many times. I think he managed to preserve that information really well. Such and it that, was super important. Yes, such that Brian could not expect the ally switch when using the Giga World Havoc in that particular turn. Yeah, because you wouldn't expect it, right? Like, on, yeah. on paper, like, oh, Tapu Lele, you presume it to have Psychic, Moonblast, Protect, and a potential Taunt, maybe, or Dazzling Gleam. Yep. Like ally switch, yeah, Lele does learn it, but I mean, how often do you, how see often do you expect Lele with it? Ally switch, yeah. yeah, so I like how um, JSD in particular used ally switch for that matchup, blocking the Gigabyte Havoc onto his Tapu Lele and knocking Charizard out with a rock side. I'm, I'm just a big fan of that play in particular, yeah. not the move ally switch, because yeah. ally switch makes the game, if you use it in round one, it makes every turn a 50 50, in I my opinion. Especially for a singles player like him, you know, to come all the way. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. Right. How people can follow different formats. Yeah. yeah, I just like how he has adapted so far. I'm just yeah. a big fan of that. And a big congratulations to Jess Duo yep. for this um, final round. He's yeah. going to move into top cut along with definitely Melvin, yeah. we know for sure, because he's yes. flawless before this. He's, five -oh. uh, he, he's actually 5 0 -oh previously before this last one. So we're round. not sure yeah. about the standings after this. We'll post the standings for sure on who is going into top cut. And yeah, we're coming to interview JSD after this. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see you for the winner's interview, JSD.